In this video, I'm going to talk about drawing graphs for functions of two variables. So I'm talking about functions from the domain R2 into R1, right? And you can actually draw the graph of this function in R3, and so we can actually visualize it. And so it's convenient to figure out, well, you know, how do we draw this? Well, we can probably generalize, we generally generalize from simpler things, right? So the simplest thing that we know how to draw is a function from R1 into R1. And how does that process work, right? Suppose we have f of x is equal to x squared. You know, that, that simple thing. Well, how would you draw it if you had to? Well, you draw your axes. Let's say you have one here, one here, two here, three here, two here, three here, and then you put one here, two here, three here, four here. Well, you just plot points, right? So at negative one, if I plug in negative one, I get one back. If I plug in one, I get one back. If I plug in two, I get four back. If I plug in negative two, I get four back. And suddenly I'm off, off my grid, but I roughly know that this is going to be parabolic. And so I've seen a parabola, parabola before. So I'm just going to fill in the gaps. And you can see that you get some sort of crude drawing and you could probably make it a whole lot better if you took your time, right? But that's it, you draw the axes, you draw some points, and then you fill it in. And what are these points like? Well, they're like the skeleton of the function, right? So they're, I would call this a zero skeleton, right? Because these are like zero dimensional pieces of information. And the idea basically goes into higher dimensions. So let's think about drawing a parabolic sheet now for fxy is equal to x squared plus y squared. Well, we're going to draw skeletons. Only now we know that the skeleton should consist of parabolas, roughly. So the first thing that we do is we draw a coordinate axis, just like we did in this first case. So here's my x-axis, my y, and this guy is going to be my f of x and y. And the first thing I consider is, well, I want to draw the skeleton where y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0, well, I can plot points. So it's good to tick these off, of course. Tick, tick, tick. This will be one, two, three, one, two, three, and the corresponding negative values. And let's tick here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one will go up one unit And we'll be right there with one, negative one, similar situation, right? So we're just drawing along the x-axis because we're assuming y is equal to zero. How about two here? Well, we'll go up four units. Two here, we'll go up four units. Three, we'll go up nine units. So roughly there. Over here, negative three will go up nine units. Way up here, past in, into the, the danger zone over here. And then we draw the parabola corresponding to that slice, or that piece of the skeleton. Great, good start. We know how to do that, right? Well, how about we look at the skeleton part where, and, and we could do this for a bunch of values of y if we wanted to, right? So let's try it for, let's try it for, well, we, we could do it for a bunch of values of y and paste that together, but in this case it's easier to look at, and you, you can do you can do it any way you would want to. Uh, in this case it's easier to look at now x is equal to zero. 
So here I have one and one, so I'm just plotting y values. I've got four and four and negative three, I get nine and nine over here. And I would draw this parabola. And it intersects this parabola down here at the bottom. And even with just the skeleton, right, I've only drawn two chunks of the skeleton, right? A chunk along, or a slice along the x-axis and a slice along the y-axis. Now I'm starting to understand a little bit more what this shape kind of looks like, right? What, what the next level is, is we're going to set f of xy equal to c, right? And we're going to call this a level set, right? So what does f of x, y equal to c mean, right? So c is some fixed number, then I have x squared plus y squared is equal to c. Well, that's just a circle, right? That's just a circle. Whenever I fix the value here, f of x, y, which corresponds to fixing some value over here, that means that my level set is going to satisfy the circular condition. All the x and y's that satisfy f of x, y is equal to that, satisfies that circular condition. And so all my slices, now that I've looked at a, uh, an x slice, and I've looked at a y slice along the y direction, and now this is a z slice, you might say. And so these slices are going to look like circles. And so roughly I can fill in by saying that there are going to be circles everywhere. So, so this should roughly trace out a circle. And so what do you get? Well, you get this bowl. You get this bowl shape. And that's, that's roughly how you would draw a simple shape like that. Now let's go through a process where we have to actually draw a full skeleton, basically. Because the uh, functions get a little bit more complicated, and it's good to just stick to one direction for the skeleton. So let's suppose we have x of x, y is equal to y squared minus x squared. So that, that generally is going to be a pretty complicated looking function. So the first thing again, we draw our coordinate axis. So this is f of x, y, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, say this is 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, and 3 say, 1, 2, and 3 say, this is 0. And I also go down into the negative region here for this guy because I have this negative up here. Let's go all the way down to the negative one. So. Well, so let's, let's first draw the slice where I set y is equal to or x is equal to 0. That's, that's really easy. If we look at this and we look at x is equal to 0, then we can draw that. So if x is equal to 0, then I just plug in values of y. Say, say that's one and one, that's two and four, two and four, and three and nine, say, three and nine. So that slice looks like parabola. So that slice looks like parabola, and that's, that's all well and good. But now let's look at successive y slices. So now we're going to set y equal to a couple of different numbers. Well, if we look at fixing y, we're just going to end up with the number here minus x squared. So we're going to have a downward pointing parabola. So we can draw all those skeletons almost immediately. We don't really have to plot all those points. So here, at y is equal to 0, I'm going to have 0. So I have a downward pointing parabola in the x direction. Let's get a different color here to kind of delineate between things. So here's, say, my parabola at that, at that juncture. 
At one, I'm going to hit exactly one, and I'm going to have a parabola very similar to that. Right, only now it's going to be this parabola. It's going to be shifted up. At two, I'm going to have another parabola. And you notice this starts to get a little messy, so it's good to kind of draw it out to visualize it, maybe, and then and then you can talk about what the actual shape should look like. You can draw a kind of a nicer shape once you figure out what it looks like. But the skeleton really helps you understand what is going on. Right? Just a bunch of parabolas here. And so what does it kind of look like here? Well, in this direction, it's parabolas pointing up, right? As I, as I change my x value, it's parabolas pointing up. And I, as I look at the uh, fixing y slices, if I fix those y values, if I fix those, I get parabolas pointing down. So roughly, if I drew this thing freehand over here, I would get roughly a saddle shape. Right? This is your typical saddle-shaped curve or saddle-shaped graph. And what happens with the the level sets of this graph? So it looks it looks roughly like this. It's kind of hard to draw in this in this thing, but you roughly get the idea that it looks basically like a saddle. The level sets, if I set c is equal to y squared minus x squared, they're going to be hyperbolas. They're going to satisfy stuff like this. Right, so if I if I take a slice where I'm fixing the z value, then I get a slice that looks like a hyperbola, which is very nice. And that's roughly how you draw. That's that's exactly how you're going to draw graphs like this. You can you can draw the skeleton, and then of course that'll get too complicated. It's a lot easier when you just have your pencil and you can erase stuff. You get the general idea of the shape, and then you draw the outline, just like we did with one-dimensional functions.